When you watch Archer Better Be of Box, you wonder how he's so successful. I mean, it really doesn't look like he's moving that fast or that he's punching very hard at all. So how is he so insanely successful? In this video, I'll break down the anatomy and the biomechanics behind the subtleties that make Archer Better Be of so successful. As I watched him more closely, he does three things insanely well. Sometimes all at once, but sometimes not. But the first thing that I have to bring up is his constant movement forward. Now we know that this can be risky because we know that it makes you susceptible to overextending and you may take some shots. But the upside is that there's a little bit more behind each punch. Check out how he does this against Moderna. Okay, so for this first sequence, I want you to primarily watch the motion of Better Bev. Even whenever he, excuse me, even whenever he or Moderna slips his second jab right here and lands a and lands a nice left, it wasn't super powerful, but he still landed it. Plants his back foot and hits a right immediately, and then he starts moving forward again. Okay, so this is huge. And now whenever he starts this next series of combos, I want you to notice that even though he's leaving the ground, he's always moving forward. So he doesn't necessarily get the benefit of generating force from the ground, but what he doesn't get from the ground, he can make up for a little bit with his center of mass constantly moving forward towards Moderna. Okay, so just really slow. Boom, boom, boom. And he just overwhelms him with that kind of fury of combos there. Now the second thing that I noticed is his hip control. Now this is super common in really good strikers like we've seen in Ryan Garcia and Alex Pereira. However, like I mentioned before, it's really sneaky how Better Bev harnesses his power. Let's watch how he does this against Enrico Colling. Okay, so here we have Better Bev approaching Enrico Colling here. And what I want you to notice the most is his hips. We're gonna talk a lot about the hips dissociating from, from the shoulders. Okay, so you'll see the hips, you'll see the shift of the weight, plant on one foot, and then you'll see the thoracic rotation that we've talked about with Ryan Garcia and with Pereira both, uh, and even some other good strikers. Uh, and then you'll see the, the, the whip through with the arm, okay? So as he engages, plants with the right, or excuse me, plants with the left, rotates his hips, boom, left rotation with the hips, the right comes and follows, bam. Next punch, hips move, fall through with the shoulder, bam. Next, with the right, shift to the left, hips move, bam. Another one, shift to the right, hips with right rotation, right, sh left shoulder follows, bam. And that just ends up being too much for Coling. So it's very subtle. He uses his hips very, very well. Uh, he just doesn't have that really big whipping movement like Pereira and Garcia does. It's, he stays very, very tight. So one more time, shift. Boom, hips, shoulder, shift, shoulder. Right rotation, left. The third and final thing that I'll mention is his accuracy. There's nothing like thinking that you've got a little bit of time to recover and then you just keep getting hit again and again and again. And even if you aren't being hit with the most powerful punch, it's psychologically overwhelming. Turns out the better be of is very accurate, even when he's not throwing punches with full force. And we see this very clearly if we slow down a series of combos that he uses to finish his fight with Rodriguez. So since we're talking about accuracy, we're gonna look at this engagement here. And I found this and I was like, oh my gosh, he really couples the last, uh, or the first thing we talked about, the movement forward with his accuracy, which is what we're gonna see here. Uh, so even though he, so they engage, he starts with the right, lands that one, lands the second. Uh, kinda clips him with the third, we're gonna give that to him. You can see right there, it clips him with the third, although it's not really flush. Still hard, I mean just, hardcore movement forward there. Four, that one lands really well. That one really messed him up. Five. Um, the sixth one. Six kind of skims him, but I don't think it lands flush. We won't go to give him the six. So right now he's five of six. Misses seven. Five of seven. Eight. Six of eight. Seven of nine. <laughs> eight of ten. And that is just a whirlwind of psychological and physical damage there. I mean, just imagine being hit by somebody like that, even if it's not a ton of power, right? You just, they never stop coming. All right, so we'll watch it. We'll watch it. I'll actually give you guys the full speed here just to kind of give you an idea. All right. Boom. 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 <laughs> Unreal. 
even after all that, I'd like to just mention that some people are just genetically gifted and really, really tough by nature. You'd be really hard pressed to convince me that Better Beev doesn't benefit from his ability to take punches or that he doesn't have a really strong work ethic that's led to his killer physique. All of these aspects contribute and it's impossible to know just how much or how little all these characteristics play into his success. These are just a few of the things I noticed when I went back and started watching his fights a little more closely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.